Starting architecture school, or university for that matter, can be filled with unknowns. If you aren't sure what tools you'll need going into architecture school, here's a list of 10 essential tools to get you started. As the first year of many architecture schools will likely place heavy emphasis on developing technical proficiencies such as drawing and making, you'll likely find yourself relying on these pencils for sketching, drafting, and shading of your drawings. When drawing with pencil, I like to start with a 2H with light pressure to map out the construction lines before moving my way up the pencil hardnesses to maybe a 2B or 4B for the darker line work. Using a mechanical pencil for basic sketch work can be helpful as well. I use the Kurutoga for most of my sketch work as I won't have to worry about sharpening my pencil. The Kurutoga also automatically rotates the pencil lid, which prevents the tip from ever getting blunt. Similar to the pencils, these drawing pens will help you through a lot during the drawing process. The varying line weights can be used to place emphasis on different parts of your drawings, such as when you need to highlight walls or columns in the building section. I personally use a set of Micron pens from Sakura. They are quite affordable and produce excellent results. Markers can be used to shade in various drawings, helping you to add depth and texture to an otherwise bland drawing. There are a lot of options out in the market, but when it comes to markers, Copics are definitely my favorite, although they are a bit pricey. If you're just starting out, I would recommend a few shades of grey such as the cool, white, or neutral tones. Of course, having all of these drawing utensils would seem a bit useless without something to draw on. It is likely that during architecture school, your tutors will ask you to draw on paper minimally A2 and above, but for everyday sketches and ideation, a simple sketchbook can do a lot. I recently got these Muji notebooks with grid dots in them, which I feel are perfect for architectural sketching as the dots can serve as a reference when drawing both 2D and axonometric drawings. Architectural models will require a lot of precision cutting, most of which you'll likely have to do by hand. I myself use the 30 degree NT cutter retractable knife with a set of spare blades that I can change out. I wouldn't recommend using X-Acto knives as the blades can be a bit short and may become an issue when cutting through thicker materials such as foam. Retractable blades, on the other hand, have a cutting edge along the entirety of its side and can be used almost like a saw to cut through thick materials. As a bonus, the blades can also be snapped off in the event that the tip becomes dull. A cutting mat is great for protecting your valuable furniture. A good A2 size mat would probably suffice for most intents and purposes, but if your course requires handcrafting larger models, then perhaps an A1 size could work too. You could probably survive on white glue or all-purpose adhesives to stick together all of your architectural models, but these glues take a heck of a long time to dry. Contact adhesives, on the other hand, will instantly stick all of your pieces of hardboard or PVC together, and maybe a few of your fingers if you're not careful. There are broadly three types of rulers you may want to get. The first is the T-square, a large T-shaped ruler that you can clip onto the end of your table to draw right-angled lines. A2 would probably be a good size, but do check on what your course will require first. I would also recommend getting a parallel ruler, as this bad boy can draw multiple parallel lines much faster than any other method I've tried. Secondly are metal rulers. You can get these in different sizes, but their main purpose is to help you cut straight edges without your knife cutting into the ruler. Third are set squares. The 30 degree and 45 degree squares are pretty customary, and they'll help you draw out your axometric and isometric drawings quickly. You may also want to consider getting a scale ruler. This ruler comes with different faces with different scales on them, and you can use them to scale up or down your drawings without using a calculator. I did find this ruler to be pretty useful, just maybe not in the way you'd expect. Transporting your precious drawings can often be a pain, and having a sturdy, adjustable tube can be a lifesaver. Simply roll up your drawings, insert them into the tube, and you're good to go.
This one comes as a no-brainer, but the type of laptop remains a contentious topic among architecture students. I was told at the beginning of architecture school to avoid thin, elegant laptops, but being a diehard macOS user, I ended up sticking with my MacBook from high school. I will probably continue to stick with macOS for future upgrades, as the current integrated GPUs in Apple Silicon are quite promising. If you don't have a specific laptop in mind, I would recommend getting something with a decent display, good ventilation, minimally 16 gigs of RAM, and also an integrated GPU. As a bonus, you should probably always have a water bottle or a cup everywhere you go. It's always a good idea to stay hydrated. As we head into the new year, I'd like to send everyone my warmest new year wishes and all the best to you on your journey to architecturehood.